This is Andy Pro off Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I'm joined by Liam Williams here in Texas. Liam, firstly, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, I'm very good. It's good to hear. Now, obviously, you're out here in Texas. You've enjoyed a few weeks over here state. So just talk to me about what you've been up to. And obviously, I know you went from <coughs> LA to Vegas and now Texas. Talk about the period that you've had over here. Yeah, so we... I've been away for like nearly two weeks now. My head's up my ass. I don't know where I'm coming or going. Um, time changes and all that. But um, so yeah, we went to LA first. I had about, f I think we had four days there. Then we went to Vegas to watch the fight and whatever. Then back to LA for a couple of days. And obviously now we're in Texas. So you know, t to to finish off the trip. Watch a fight Saturday, some good fights, and uh, head on Monday, I think. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's been, um, it's gone by quite fast, to be honest with you. We've been a couple of different gyms, uh, Freddie Roaches, Mayweather's, uh, Capite Capitello. We went to his gym, uh, top ranked gym. So, it's been really good, and, and I've really enjoyed myself, to be honest with you. But I am looking forward to getting back home now. And, Obviously, I miss my little girl, and uh, well, that's it really. To be honest, I was gonna say, like, I'll say, I, I'll, uh, most people are like, oh, I miss my family, I miss, but to be honest, like, and my family know what I'm like, I, I'm not asked about stuff like that, I'm just, I just do my own thing. Even when I'm home in Wales, I like, I just crack on my own stuff, I don't really see people, and I just, you know, I'm always on the go. So for me, it's just like, um, I just miss my little girl, to be honest with you, and, um, and I miss having a little bit more routine as well. I like being in training and, and you know, getting my head down and just getting on with it, you know. So, obviously, when you're away, you're a bit all over the place. You're not eating set meals every day, you know, like you there and everywhere. What brought on this little period <coughs> out here then? How come yourself, you know, I know Cal Brook and Kid Galad travelled out as well. How come you all decided to come out, out to America for these last couple of weeks? Me and, me and uh, I think Kel was always planned to come, really. Um, with his dad and his agent and whatever but me and Barry have been speaking about it for a couple of weeks it just never come round to it and to be honest I, I never thought it was going to happen I just thought oh, you know, I'll leave him go whatever and then I was in the gym on last what day did I come I come on a Monday so like on a Thursday before Barry says should we go LA in Vegas I'm just like, yeah, fuck it, let's go. So I literally drove home, uh, packed my bag. I didn't pack my bags. My mother packed my bags. <laughs> um, literally drove home, see my little girl for a couple of days just to make it more slip before I go. And literally went, like, well, three days later. I went back to Sheffield on the Sunday, so I come home on a Thursday. Two, three days home, gone again. Just off the cuff, really. So you mentioned briefly for some of the gyms you visited. What was you doing in those gyms? Was it just ticking over? Was you sparring? What exactly was you getting up to? I haven't been doing any sparring. <coughs> Excuse me. I haven't been doing any sparring, but um, just been just bits of bag work, pad work, bits of running, just just general, you know, just ticking over really. Uh, I've done I've done pads with a couple of different trainers and that. Um, I don't know the guy's name, but I done I done some pads with one of uh, Pacquiao's Filipino, this little Filipino guy, Ma Marv, I want to say, Move Marv, something. Um, but anyway, yeah, just like um, just getting about a bit and just experiencing different things, and I, I've really enjoyed it. But to be honest, with you, I, I can't wait to get back to Sheffield because I think I found my, I think I found my, the place where I'm needed you know that's that's my that's what's been calling for a couple of years and now I found that I'm, I'm happy where I am so was it so with that in mind then was it a matter of you travelling around to these gyms having little sessions and that to see if maybe you'd be better suited stateside instead of Sheffield no no it, it was never that yeah. um, but on the other hand it's still good to see what different people do and how, and how they work you know and like I'm pads with a couple of different people and you can see the like, obviously the way I do pads with Dominic and whatever, is Dominic's very different to, to your average trainer anyway. Um, but then you've got like these Mexican trainers and 
they just do they just do different things and more like uh, different combinations, more looping shots and you know in the pocket kind of fighting. But it's been good. It's just a good just a good experience all round and um, and I enjoyed it. But as I said, it's for me, it's nothing like being in being in Sheffield and training with Dom. I'm, that's that's where I'm meant to be. I think. Now, what is the latest with yourself? Obviously, last time we spoke, it was in Sheffield when uh, the Brook De Luca card, and you said you're kind of waiting around, hoping to get the possible Jaime Munguia fight. What is the latest with that? Have you got anything that you can update us on? No, I can't. Um, I'm told that there's something possibly in the pipeline uh, with Munguia, uh, but like that's that's all there is to tell you. To be honest with you, I don't know anymore myself but I'm hoping that progresses now over the next couple of days well after the weekend and and we can get something nailed down because I, I need a big fight now I, I want a big fight and I need a um, I'm not happy to take any lower level fights to keep me ticking over or it's not what I want now I'm, I, I'm at that level and I want I want tough fights I want to be in fights where people are going to probably write me off or you know, I just want to be in 50-50 fights then, yeah, where people, you know, some people are going to bet against me and some are uh, maybe not, but yeah, I just, I just need I just need big fights now and um, to get myself up for it and motivated and, you know, to really want to dig in and prove people. Obviously, <coughs> since your Liam Smith defeat, you've been on this brilliant run and the last time out against Atlantis Fox, again, it was a brilliant performance and stoppage. But it's, things have gone quiet. What, why have things gone quiet now? What has Frank been talking to you about? What, what's been your entire take on this situation? I imagine it's been frustrating for you. It has been frustrating. And the thing is, to be totally honest with you, I don't want to upset anyone, but that has been the frustrating thing, is, is the fact that I don't really know where I'm at. If somebody said to me, right, look, listen, just, just stay fit, keep taking over. We're going to possibly get some for you in May, June. I'm okay with that. But at least I know. Whereas for the last couple of weeks I, I have been in the dark. And whether that's anybody's fault, I don't really know, but it's just like I want to know a bit more where you know and I just feel like I'm waiting day day by day at the moment. Uh, but I do believe good things come to those who wait and stay patient, you know, and um and the cream always rises to the top, so I'm just trying to just trying to stay focused and ticking over. So when that call does come, bam, let's do it. Minj, obviously we've spoke about Jaime Munguia. How long would you be willing to wait for that fight? Not very long, to be honest with you, because I need to fight ASAP. Really, um, so I've only had two weeks off since my, I had two weeks off after my last fight. A week of that I was off. The second week was just like I think I'd done two or three runs just to break myself back in. Um, so yeah, exactly. So um, you know, I enjoyed myself. I had some, I had a good time off, and um, I spent some quality time with with friends, family, my little girl, you know. But um, I always thought I was going to be back in the ring a bit sooner, so that's why I didn't get too uh, unfit or not. Not that that's it's not a very professional thing to do anyways, going get fat and on the piss and whatever, but it's just like, I, w I probably would have had a bit more time off if I'd known that I was going to be sitting around for this long. But, you know, it is where I just, I'm not willing to wait around for, for a certain individual for too long. I just need whatever, what, the biggest fight that's available to me, uh, the soonest is available, do you know what I mean? So, We'll see, we'll see whether they can pull out the bag, but I want one of the big names. I want Munguia, Andrade, Charlo, uh, Golovkin, Derivanchenko, whatever his name is, I, I can't pronounce it. But Canelo, I don't, I don't care, I just want a, I want a big fight and, and I really want to test myself. And, um, you know, I, I believe I'll put up a very good fight to any one of these guys and if not beat them you know you've obviously <coughs> men you've mentioned some names there who are tied to Matt Room which is their show obviously junior. on Saturday you, junior, yeah. um, you mentioned some names there who are tied with Matt Room or DAZN 
not all of them, but some of them. Is that something that maybe it's going to be an issue for you to get those fights? Obviously, being with Frank, with those guys being signed to other promoters. It depends, really. I think at the end of the day, if Frank wants the best for me and their promoter wants the best for them, then I'm sure they can come to some kind of agreement. Do you know what I mean? So it's just one of them where it could it could play a part. It could become a little bit difficult, but. Again, to repeat myself, if if both promoters and teams want the best fights and you know the best whatever for their fighter, then they should you know cut the beef and just just work with it. You know. Now, obviously, earlier on in the interview, you mentioned you was out in Las Vegas last weekend. Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, too. Tyson with a seventh round victory. What was your thoughts on his win and his performance? Do you know what? He surprised me. I thought he was going to win anyway, Fury. I, but I thought he was going to be fairly competitive, just like the last one. Like, no, a fight, I expected a fight where Fury was always winning, but Wilder was always going to be in the fight and dangerous, you know what I mean? But proved everyone wrong. I, well, I would say probably 80-90% of the people. And, and he just come on fire and stuck it on him, pushed him back. He buoyed him off a little bit, didn't he? And, and he just... He just outmanned him, so fair play. I love Fury, you know. Yeah. He's, for me, he's the man. And what I like even more about is Fury is, he's one of us. He's one of the lads, you know, and, and he always shows me a lot of time and a lot of respect. So I, I love him for that because he could be, you know, he could be a bit of a dick, really, couldn't he? And, uh, you know, some people at that level are a bit big-headed and, you know, they don't really want to talk to someone um, who's, who's not on their level, but um, I respect him. I feel he's, he's going to go down in history, isn't he? Special. What did you make of a couple of things Deontay said after the, the fight? Firstly, he said he didn't agree with his um, corner throwing him a towel. Did you think it was the right decision at the time? I 100% thought it was the right decision because he was going to get knocked out and I, and I think he was going to get... I think he was going to get hurt at the end of the day. Your corner's not there to watch you go out on your shield or uh, go down swinging or all these other bullshit comments he've made. Like At the end of the day, whether you want to go out on your shield or go down swinging, whatever that may be, but at the end of the day, that, that cornerman has a, has a job to, um, to protect you, most of all, and do what's, what's right for your health, safety and well-being, whatever, but... Um, and at the end of the day, if, if let's just say his, his corner didn't throw in the towel and he got knocked up bad, he had a brain injury, he passed away, he was whatever, he was badly injured, yeah? Everyone would turn around and say, his trainer's a prick, he's this, he's that, he's that. So really, his trainer's in a bit of a shit position and uh, and there's, there's a lose-lose situation for him, but I fully believe that he done that he made the right decision and I think most people inside of boxing would, would agree with that as well and um, you know fair play to him he went against obviously he may have known that Wilder was going to be upset by that by him doing that but he put that to one side because he knew what was right and what was wrong and he done the right thing I mean, obviously the other thing being the costume comment about it weighing £45 on his ring walk and that what was your thoughts on Deontay saying that? <coughs> It's bullshit, isn't it, to be honest with you. Um, but then I seen an interview or something put up about him saying that he, he used to train in like a forty pound. He's, he's uh, majority of the time, majority of the time he trains in uh, extra weight, forty plus pounds. So then he just contradicted himself massively, any and um, and yeah, I just think he's full of shit, basically. Um, you know, respect to him. He's had a great run. He's fucking. He's he seems a good guy to be fair, but just just take your losses and take him on the chin. Come back, live to fight another day. Final thing, Deontay said he's going to exercise the rematch clause. Are you interested in seeing a rematch between them again? No, I'm not. I'm not interested in seeing a, a rematch. If it was close, it'd be something like he wanted to see the rematch after the first fight. 
But then the second fight, why would you want to... For Fury, I bet he's rubbing his hands because he's thinking, I know i got the beat in this guy now. And confidence and mentally, he's got one over on him again, more than what he already did. So Fury's fucking easy money here. But for fight fans and for Wilder, why does what? Once Wilder loses that fight again, in the same kind of fashion, that's probably going to be him done. But then when he just step back, regroup, one or two wins, and he's back there again. Or maybe, maybe even they could come to some kind of deal because he's got a, a rematch clause. Who's to say that they wouldn't be able to possibly make some kind of deal of leave Fury and Joshua fight? He fights the winner down the line, or whatever that may be. I don't know. I, I, it's just a thought. Uh, but I just don't think it's an ideal situation for him to go straight back into rematching in a short period of time. Obviously, you've got the money situation there, which he's going to earn a shitload of money, which you can't blame him from that perspective. But every other angle, is, it's not a great move. Well, Liam, we will keep it there and I'll allow you to go off and enjoy the rest of your night and your final few days here in Texas before you head home to sunnier climates in Sheffield. <laughs> Liam, it's Sunny been a pleasure. Wheel. I'm going back to Wales for a couple of days first. I've been, I've been away for, well, since I've been in Sheffield and coming here, it'll be three weeks. So I need to get home and just have some, some Liam time, do you know what I mean? Well, Liam, I'll allow you to have some Liam time now as well as for the rest of your few days. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social and we'll see you back in the UK. Anytime, Cheers. Mate. Thank you very much for your time. That's That's brilliant. Brilliant. Cheers, Liam. Cheers.